everybody welcome to rude awakening tv tonight is an unusual thing we're doing a saturday night stream instead of our sunday stream we're shaking it up now you're gonna hear yeah i've got a cold isn't that just like every other week around here i've got a cold it never went away it came back today so we uh we got a few messages from people saying you know I'd really like to show up for the stream but Sunday's difficult for me can you do a Saturday night stream we're gonna try it uh, it's good for us it really works well for us it might really work well for us in the summer too so we're gonna try it uh, today we are going to be making some enchiladas and this enchilada is kind of cool because it has an enchilada sauce that normally I would just buy and today I'm going to make it right from scratch from rehydrating some chilies. So we have some fun things to do with that. We also uh, have a fun game. Now, if you, you know, maybe you know what generation you're from. There, there's all kinds of groups of people that are generational. I happen to be a boomer. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's the boomer generation. There's generations before me. There's generations after me. And the other day, my grandson, who is nine, said, did you know that I am a gen alpha? And I, I didn't even know that there was a new term. So that got me interested. Hey, Chris, welcome. Come on in. So we got sort of taken up with the conversation about yeah. Yay, we got sort of taken up with the, okay, Boomer, with the whole conversation about generations. And I started looking into what the alpha generation is, and I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by this group of little people that are going to change the world the same way the Boomers did change the world. According to the Australian researcher who does all of this, he says that the alpha generation is going to outnumber the boomers and is going to be the most successful and blah, blah, blah. We're going to go through all of that, but let's start with our drink o'clock. So today is a raspberry margarita. Now in the summertime, when raspberries are in season, I take them and I put them into a little bit of a vacuum seal and I freeze them so that we can use them all winter. I'm going to, I've got some ice in a blender. I'm going to put in, I don't know if this, if I should drain the juice. No, I think I'm going to keep the juice. So I've got maybe about a cup. We're going to put that right on top of the ice. So we're going to have what I would consider to be a frozen margarita and we're going to put in about a, about a shot and a half per drink maybe it'll help this cold that hit me just hit me well actually I've had it for a long time and it never left and it sort of resurfaced so about a one and a half so I'm gonna put three in cuz I'm doubling this so we've got, we're getting a little bit of snow uh, in Kawartha Lakes right now. Just a real fine snow. It looks kind of picturesque. And I hear that Toronto is going to be getting really hit. So let's, let's watch that. Now I don't have any triple sec. I don't know why I can't get triple sec around here. So I'm going to use uh, Cointreau and I'm going to put one shot. So about half a shot each drink. Yeah, you know, I always, I hear people say, like especially the millennials say, okay, boomer. And, you know, I always felt so bad about being a boomer. And then I did all this research for the last couple of days and thought, well, we ain't so bad. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put uh, one ounce of lime juice. Uh, ever since I was, uh, when I was on with Chris on the Speakeasy, I discovered that, the Speakeasy channel, I discovered that buying lime juice like this is really nice. It's really nice. So this is sort of a large marge, Chris, but made with raspberries. We're going to put in one ounce of lime juice uh, each. Let's make this nice and tart. Gotta have a large marge. You gotta. I, I'm, I'm sold on margaritas. I don't know. Tom Collins and a, and a margarita is kind of my fave. And that's it. So let's blend this and see what we get out of this. Ah! 
Okay, I almost had. It's not working. It's working. How's that on the microphone? I have a new apron on. This is the one that John gave. <laughs> hey, you gotta. Allison, welcome. Come on in. This is uh, an apron from John that I got from uh, my daughter's partner I got for Christmas. And, you know, it fits okay. There's a little weirdness to it, though. Look at this, you know? Like, you gotta move these things aside to see my name. So we're gonna... Whoa, whoa, whoa! I got a leak on my chicken. Dang. Yeah, that's nice. I was going to top it up with uh, club soda. I don't think we have to. What the heck? Why did it do that? Okay. Look how nice that looks, even though I just made a mess. It's kind of a Bombay move, isn't it? To put, have a mess like that on your chicken. I'm just going to rinse the chicken off. It'll work. So this is nice on a Saturday night. Thanks uh, for the Speakeasy crew for showing up. It's kind of nice on a Saturday night. Like I said on my Instagram, you know, maybe you're getting ready to go out. Maybe you are getting ready for a gig. Maybe you just want to be hanging out. Don't spill it. Oh God. All right, well, let's cheers. Oh. Allison says to turn down the background music a bit. Um, it's okay. What did I miss? Mm, you know what's wrong with it? It's not sweet enough. Maybe it's not supposed to be. I always think, okay, I need a sweet drink. Maybe I don't. What do you think? Um, should a margarita be a little bit better? Yeah. Should a margarita be a little sweet? Okay, first of all, straw's not working. <laughs> no, no, maybe not. No, it, it tastes very nice, but it's not sweet. It's actually delicious. Cheers. Yeah, margs are kind of sour. You know, I just keep always thinking it's going to be a sweet drink because that's what I like. We are going to uh, talk about the generation ages. So if you're here as a millennial, which I just about got to get that down. Just about everybody here is a millennial, I think, except, you know, the boomers in the house. 1901 to 1924, the greatest generation. My grandmother was born during that generation, so I agree. The silent generation, 1925 to 1945. Why that was the silent generation? That I know, that simple syrup that I had last time, you know, I wouldn't mind some of that. I'm going to put some of that in mine. So, Chris, you weren't here uh, last stream, and I made this raspberry simple syrup. And I think it's, it's delicious. But there's a little mint in it. That's, that's okay by me. This, is, this was for a little mint raspberry drink. And it was, no, no, I'm not doing that. So anyway, we're still talking about the generations. Why they called it the silent generation, I don't know. And then we have the boomers. 1946 to 1964. Interesting enough, the boomers have an average date of survival. The average death of a boomer is, come on, Chris, what's the average death of a boomer? And this isn't wishful thinking, this is just you guessing. Mm, let's go with that. <laughs> no, Chris, it's not 65. The average a death of a boomer is 79, so I'm still going to be around for a bit. The Gen X is 1965 to 1979. 
<laughs> well, it should be. Uh, millennials, you know, like this group that happened to happen Gen Y, 1980 to 1994, Gen Z, 1995 to 2012, and then we have the Gen Alpha, 2013 to 2025. Things I discovered from my grandson about Gen Alpha is that they are the most diverse and inclusive group that they are born with an ability to accept diversity that uh, maybe other generations struggle with. They spend the most time online than any generation. They uh, were born in the same year as the, the, as the iPad. They do not know a life without devices. They are the most, um, the most climate advocators. That surprises me. That surprises me. They have a life expectancy. And I find that the Gen Alpha is probably the most interesting to me because we're predicting every other generation. We know these things already. What do you think the Gen uh, Alpha life expectancy is? If you think that, you know, we, uh, the boomers, live 150, well, there's a possibility of that, but no, their life expectancy is 73, less than a boomer. And you would think that there's more technology, there's better, I don't, I don't know what that is, but of course, that's always prediction. That's not like they know, how they don't have the facts like we do with all the other generations. <laughs> What, oh, what else? Uh, they are the most competitive group so far. And, you know, I, I, every time I read something more about it, I know that group of kids and I thought, yeah, it's true. They are uh, shaped by technology. I would have thought, like, if I have some questions about loudest, proudest, all those things, and you'll have to guess which generation. I... I did not, I'm trying to flatten these chicken breasts, by the way. I did not think that uh, Gen Alpha would be the most competitive. I actually thought that might be the millennial, but no, apparently not. The millennial is the least competitive. Uh, they know things beyond their years, and they're finding that this is a strategic group of young people who can figure out problems more so than any other generation. Uh, I didn't. Uh, and another thing is they're brand savvy. So when you see advertisements right now being focused on a certain generation, it is being directed to the alpha. All right, that's enough about the alphas, but I am pretty fascinated about it. We are going to uh, start our chicken enchiladas. Hey! It is Mobile Reno, and we were just talking about Gen Alpha, and everything I've learned about it so far is from Bowden. So I don't know where he learned all this, but he knows a lot about it. So I'm trying to flatten these out. What I want to do is get a consistency on these chicken breasts. I want them to be able to, it's, I'm not tenderizing them, or I would use a hammer. I'm trying to flatten them out. <laughs> Bowden is the star tonight. Well, he's not. He is just the only Gen Alpha in our family so far. We are going to have another Gen Alpha. We, we have, a, he's a magical boy. We have a contest tonight. Um, as you know, everybody that's on here, we have a grandchild coming up. So if you can look above here, estimations on the grandbaby Hey, Nicole's here. Uh, if you can give an uh, estimation. Now, Liz told me February 28th. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, give us your estimations. Thomas is going to record these, and there'll be a grand prize. I don't know what it is. We're going to turn on... Uh, our heat, you know, how we check our pan. We're going to get it hot. March 2nd. Okay, Nicole's March 2nd. And Snackington Palm says, oh, you say February 27th. 
Yes, Monique can guess, but she would have said last Saturday. May 15th. Wow, that is a ripe Gen Alpha. That might be a problem for us. All right, I have got uh, the chicken breasts uh, flattened. Now, this is a recipe that's really new to me. That's why I said, and the baby <laughs> will be 25 pounds. <laughs> well, that might be a problem. So uh, Thomas is going to record those guesses, and we'll see. We're, this is brand new to me. I'm going to be <laughs> just sort of enchilada sauce is new, so I might be looking at my recipe a lot. Chris will have to get over that. Great on a Saturday night. Uh, I felt like streaming. It feels better. It feels more fun. I just wait. I just hope that it is uh, March because uh, I have purchased a ring that has birthstones in it and I really don't want to change that ring. So I'm hoping just a Wednesday. All right, I am just dicing this chicken up into some strips and we're going to uh, saute this with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper and we'll prepare this for our enchiladas. The, I think the star of this show though is going to be this enchilada sauce because maybe you've made it and uh, you know I have to laugh every time I think about these peppers because I think about Allison and Chris talking on the, the Speakeasy Friday night stream how the weird thing that people do when they're talking about something Italian and all of a sudden they just nail this word and they come out with like they're speaking and they'll say parmesan and all of a sudden you go right into this Italian accent and I found myself doing that with these chiles. Chile. You know, like you can just say chile. But you know, no, every time I would do it, I'd have to say enchilada, enchile. I don't know why we do it. I don't know, You're like trying to make it sound really authentic. Chiles. 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 <laughs> so we're going to, um, ew, did anybody see that? I just dropped a piece of chicken on the floor. Okay, you wash your hands. I'm going to salt and pepper this. Season it well. You're never going to have a flavor unless you layer your seasonings. Uh, Chris, if you're new here, you haven't seen my electric salt and pepper shakers. I'm very proud of them. Lots of salt. Don't be scared of the salt. <laughs> it does sound like drones. All right, <clears throat> we're going to put these in. Mix that salt up. My pan was a little hot. That's why I took it off. I, I didn't want that mess. Oh, good. Cook the bottom on. All right, and what do I do now? 11 rows or 11 toes. <laughs> okay. 11 toes. Well, that's nice. I suppose it'll cost a little bit more for a pedicure, but... Okay, I'm going to scrub the board off because, you know, we cooked... We cut chicken on it. Okay, let's start. The chicken is going to be just uh, sauteing over there. We're going to start our enchilada sauce. What kind of superpowers will it have? Oh boy. I guess it will maybe be able to do my... Taxes. My, no, no, not my taxes. <laughs> That's a superpower. I think it's going to be able to do my producing of this show. All right, burgery is delicious. I don't know if the um, simple syrup really helped it. I have two chiles that I want to bring to your attention. So I bought these dried guajillo chiles 
And this is an, a dried ancho chile. And really, what is a, an ancho chile? It is, ooh, it is a poblano chile that has been flattened out wide. So ancho is not a type. Ancho just means flat and wide, like some butts I've seen. So we're going to work with those. I have hydrated those. I have hydrated those, and we're going to be using those. <clears throat> Let's go. Oh, man. No wonder. Well, it shut off when I took the pan off. So my induction has a bit of a, of a, a function that this, this, <laughs> this has a function that if you take the pan off, <laughs> if you take the pan off, it shuts off, which just backfired on me. All right, we're sauteing that, we're browning that. Uh, while I am starting this, we have a little, do you want to do the, uh, what we have termed the idiot? Yes, idiot? Yeah, okay, we have a little video for you to watch while I'm getting everything ready to do the enchilada sauce. Now, wait, show the Schofield scale, first of all. Okay, if you look at the Schofield scale, this will tell you how the peppers rate for heat. If you look at the top, it's the Carolina Reaper. If you go down to the bottom, you'll see three types of uh, peppers that we're using today. So we have got the uh, Poblano, the Guajillo, and the Serrano. And those, so we're making relatively not hot peppers, but you can see the top one. So, you know, we looked up people who eat peppers as a live streamer, and we found one that I'm glad Chris is here because I think Chris and Allison will find this funny and I think this should be done on the uh, Friday Speakeasy Radio. Let's go to this guy. Well, good afternoon everybody. Um, Ricky D here and now it's time to eat a Carolina Reaper live on video let's do it what I'll be doing is eating the chili um, setting a timer for five minutes so I will go five minutes without any relief um, I've got my sick bucket here, just in case. Um, and the only really relief I do have is some milk that I will drink uh, after five minutes has elapsed. I've got some water here just to wash it down with. We all know water makes things worse, so I won't be drinking this all the time. But there we go. Right, so. This is gonna hurt. Definitely recording, yeah? It is. Right, here we go. Bottoms up. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Right, it's gone. Holy shit. Ah. How was that? That's hot. Oh. oh shit! Oh 
love that guy uh yeah he just consumes it like he's eating a pear and uh, i i gotta tell you like as we're preparing for the stream we kept, we just kept referring to him as the idiot all right we're making the enchilada sauce yeah i know he just consumes it and you would be surprised i'm not no you wouldn't the millennials would not be surprised at how many people are on camera eating and snorting hot peppers but the peppers we're using tonight these two types of peppers and uh, by the way the uh, date on the back of these is 2025 I thought that was curious it's the same age as uh, when the alphas will stop being born they're being born I, I, got, I can't remember the number because I'm a boomer I can't remember I think it's something like 2.5 million a week are being born. They are going to outnumber the boomers and we're known to be the largest generation. We're dying. But we're dying, so what the hell? We need that. All right, so I'm just uh, finishing up this chicken. I want, I want it to uh, get brown because there's no more cooking this. This has to be completely cooked. You're going to be placing this right into the enchiladas. And all that I've seasoned this with, I might cut it up a little bit more, all that I've seasoned that with is salt and pepper. So it's not a lot. Now, uh, I'm going to ask a few questions about generations. So if you are there, who are the hardest workers? Of all the generations, who are the hardest workers? Boomer replacement theory. Hmm. Now, I have a feeling you're going to say, oh, she's asking this question. Boomers, you would think so. I thought the same thing. Well, that's subjective. Hardest workers, it is subjective and very acute observation, Chris, because the hardest workers are the Gen Z, they say. The Gen Z, Z think that they are, no, not even the silent generation. The Gen Z say that they're the hardest workers, although they qualify that with when they want to be. So in your head, while we're talking about these, I want you to think about that generation. Ooh, that's a little pink. We're not eating that. I want you to think about somebody you know in that generation. Isn't that anyone? I know. But they specifically selected in a survey of, of multitudes of different cross generations by this researcher in Australia. They say that they're the hardest workers 
but they are hardworking when they want to. And that brings us to what the millennials have discovered is a work-life balance that boomers never knew or were never allowed to have. All right, I like this. I think it's cooked enough. I'm gonna turn the heat up a bit because we are going to be going into the enchilada sauce. Now, normally I would have this on my little plate, but I didn't today. Let's take the chicken out and start the enchilada sauce, which I think is really the most fun. The marge is good. My marge is really good. Uh, once I got over that, it should be sweet. I liked it a lot. All right, we're going to put that aside and let that not cool, but you know. Okay, next thing we're going to add is some onions. Now, the, the uh, next question in our generational thing is, who is the coolest? Again, disparity. Not everybody agrees on this. Who is the coolest? And don't say millennials. <laughs> I have added one onion and three green onions into that. <laughs> no, it's not the boomers. Who are the coolest? Now, Gen X has taken that on as theirs. Gen X says they're the coolest, although boomers, who invented cool? We were hippies. Nikki Generation's the coolest? Apparently not. Apparently not. Okay, I need to go back to my uh, HelloFresh. It's not HelloFresh. It's me trying to create a, a, a recipe, but I'm not there yet. Uh, okay, now we're going to cut up the serrano. Now, it's not really a serrano. It's a jalapeno pepper. If you want to use the overhead, you'll see this is a jalapeno pepper. But what is the difference between a serrano and a jalapeno is that uh, the jalapeno is smooth. They're the same, same heat. So we are going to cut that, slice it this way, and remove the seeds because as we know, some of the seeds and the uh, pith inside is where the heat resides and we don't really want all of that. We might want some of it, but we've got enough happening in this. The Nikki generation is the coolest. Well, I don't know. Gen X says that they are. And boomers are like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Sure. We were the coolest. I didn't see you surviving in, in uh, Woodstock. Not Woodstock, Ontario. I don't think any of you survived that Gen X. Hey, wait a minute. You know what has come to my attention? We have a Gen X in the, in the chat. Mo, uh, uh, Nicole is Gen X. She is pretty cool, so she could be. All right, we're going to add this. Uh, and let's see, this, this, and then we're going to put some garlic in here. So let's chop this up. I, I have some extra green onions. I think we'll use those in... Uh, a, a, maybe a bit of a garnish. So this enchilada sauce, you're saying, well, she's sauteing everything. We're going to cook all of these things, and then we're going to be pureeing that. It's a very nice smell. And we're going to put in about five cloves of garlic. <clears throat> huh. Troy is a Gen X. Oh, Troy is a Gen X. So we have uh, Nicole and Troy... That's great because we have everybody here except the silent. He does cool things, makes babies, that's true. We have uh, millennials. We have a millennial on the cusp here. We've got a couple Gen X's. We've got boomers. Yay, little Miss Erin's here, another millennial. We're talking about generations today. So if you can answer any of these questions, we're having a blast with it because we almost 
have a Gen Alpha. Any day now, we're going to have another Gen Alpha. All right, we're going to saute that down. We've got some garlic in there, yummy, yummy. Now, what we're gonna do now is put a little bit of flour. If anybody in the house is somewhat of a cook, you'll know what we're doing. Overhead, please. <laughs> we are um, putting some flour in this. And why are we doing that? What are we creating? Hello, she's still here. Uh, <clears throat> what did I miss? Why are we doing what? Why did I add some flour to my pan that I've got things in? I've got some onions, I've got some peppers, and now I'm adding a little bit of flour, and I'm going to let that flour cook a bit so I get a nice nutty. Yes, I'm making a roux, R-O-U-X, I'm making a roux. Toast that flour, we are, we're making it nice and nutty. All right, I have to use cornstarch. Cornstarch works, I don't know if it really, yeah, we gotta get that sauce thick. Cottage pie, look at you being all cottagey. Next question was, uh, who was the coolest? Who is the most empathetic? The most empathetic. Who can understand each other? And who the hell cares about each other? Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> we're making it tick. All right, we need to add in some... Wait, I gotta go back. He says Gen Z. Not boomers, no. Who said that? Little, little Miss Erin little says Gen Z. Uh, the most empathetic? Yes. Yes, you are right. Finally, somebody here who knows these generations. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I've got to add a little bit. Now, today I made a little bit of adobo sauce because I can't find it, so I made it. It's just uh, apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, some seasonings. You can probably find it, but I could not. I'm going to add that to our to our pan, and then I'm gonna add some broth. Yes, I have store-bought broth, what of it? And <clears throat> this is gonna be, oops, before I do that, one teaspoon of ground coriander and one teaspoon of cumin. I don't have a teaspoon. thought boomers would have been empathetic. <coughs> I just took that in. Wow. Okay, a teaspoon of ground coriander and a teaspoon of cumin. Once we get this uh, enchilada sauce on, we can really start working on it. And now three table, three cups of chicken stock for that roux, but we're going to add it in Let's toast that a bit. We're gonna add it in a little slowly. Boomers are the most racist. Who says that? Mm. You know, it could be. But alphas are uh, actually, what I've read, are the most inclusive. It, it could be. Um, I didn't see anything about racism, but I, I don't know. I, I, I don't agree wholeheartedly on that just because of people I know. And I would say that uh, the generation before me, the one before us is the silent. I would say that the one before us might have more of that natural tendency. Okay, I'm gonna add the second cup and let it thicken, let it come back to its thick. Don't let it stick though, because you're gonna to get too much fond at the bottom and it's not very, was that two or three cups? <laughs> I don't know, anybody watching? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna put another one because that looks like two. Gotta get thick again. Okay, so let's go back to the most empathetic. Who are the brokest? Which generation is the brokest? <clears throat> Who says that? Millennials is the answer to that. Aaron is nailing all of these. Yes, the millennials are the brokest. Now, all of these things are blanket generalizations. We know that. These are a, this is a survey that's been done over many countries and over many, many people. There's a rationale behind all of these two. I just didn't uh, get all of that in. Okay. Nikki generation. Okay, the cold thing happens. I have to just step aside, wipe my nose and come back. I'll wash my hands. <laughs> I, I spared you. I spared you that. Wash my hands and go on. So, yes. Right again. They are the brokest. Like I said, blanket generalizations. Okay, we're going to get that thick. And then we've got the fun of our new peppers. Let me just make sure I am doing the right thing. So now I add, now I add in these peppers. So these are the dried peppers and they have been hydrated. And now uh, today, you have to do this the day before or you could do it in the morning and cook it for the end of the day. Now I am going to take these and I'm going to add these to the enchilada sauce. It says to remove these seeds. I think I might because, uh, again, it, I read so much about them being bitter. So is it easier to just buy some enchilada sauce? Well, perhaps, but this is pretty tasty. Yeah, I'm going to remove all these seeds. The, not all of them, just some. And remember, these are... Um, these aren't really hot, so we're not going to have a hot sauce. Okay, that is actually just one pepper, and I think it's enough. I'm just going to rinse my hands of that. All right, that was who was the brokest, and uh, little Miss Aaron got that. Next one, who's the loneliest? Who is the loneliest recorded? Who actually in the survey indicated that they're lonely? I would have said boomers because uh, or, well, the silent, you know, the silent gen. Yeah, well, this is it, you know, like, when you think about this survey, how could they survey people who are dead? So I'm thinking that, uh, it, you know, a little bit jaded. Okay. Now, the enchilada sauce should take on a red color because of those peppers. So we're going to see, I'm just going to clean up a little bit, got a mess here. I'm going to get it back to a thickened sauce. All right, <clears throat> Gen Z is the loneliest, and, but in my family the older Gens have way more kids and family to get. Yeah, very true, and I also read that the boomers are on their second career. So I don't think they have enough time to be lonely. Who's the happiest? This surprised me. Who is the happiest? Hmm. 
Ooh, this smells really good. Any guesses on Happy Happy? I can't see when you've got that thing up. That's always the problem. All right, I am going to now take this off. Boomers? Uh, happiest, no. The happiest are the millennials. And what surprised me about this is the millennials are also the brokest. So I guess money doesn't buy happiness. Now I'm so glad that Erin stopped in because she seems to be the one who's got all the answers. All right, I am putting this into um, a ninja so that I can puree this and make a nice sauce. It is a little bit thin. I was hoping for a little bit thicker. The, I made it before and it was thicker. I like it, but I, I also believe that it's not gonna be as red as I want. So what I wanna do is get it all into this blender so that I can have a nice smooth sauce to put on our enchiladas. Andrea. Hey, Andrea's here, welcome, come on in. We are talking about generations, and uh, I, Andrea, I would assume that you are a millennial, and we're asking questions about who's the loneliest, who's the happiest, and would you believe that millennials are the brokest, but millennials are also the happiest? So if you can get that together, I want to get rid of this and I don't know where. I'm going to put it right into there. It's a little bit too much sauce. I don't need it all. Hmm, yeah, so that's, I want to put another pepper in there. I, I want some darker color. Brokest makes sense, it does, but happiest at the same time. Does that make sense? I'm putting this whole pepper into the enchilada sauce. We're making enchiladas with uh, chicken, and we are making uh, the, the enchilada sauce from scratch. How do you measure happiness? How do you measure happiness? Well, I guess that wasn't part of the survey, but also the flaw in the survey is, is this done in, uh, you know, generalizations, or is this done by really a survey? Because the silent generation um, and the greatest generation, okay, the greatest generation, they're dead, the silent generation, uh, that was 1945 when that ended. Uh, you know, I don't even know if they know what they're doing now. The dark looks nice, yeah. You know what happens though, when you uh, mix something that's super hot without a vent, we might have a problem. Let's see if it works. Okay, I think that last pepper was a great idea. Check out the color of this enchilada sauce. I like it. I like it. Okay, we don't need this pan, I don't think, because we're now we've got the enchilada sauce. I think now we can start to uh, assemble the enchiladas. Shit. Yeah, raspberry marg. Yeah, I wish you were here. I know you would appreciate this. So we've got um, raspberry puree, straight up, no sugar. And of course, tequila, Cointreau, because I didn't have any triple sec, a little bit of lime juice. Cheers. I need more something. It needs what? Something. It's sour. It's sour. Well, yeah, it's a margarita. No, it doesn't taste margarita. Either. Well, here, taste more that's not a margarita. I was thinking more like the tequila. No. You need to operate my cameras. All right, enchilada sauce looks yummy. It's also very, very yummy. Okay, next question. Uh, who eats the most fast food? No rim, no, no, we're not rimming today. Who eats the most fast food?
we are going to uh, just put a little bit of Pam or a little bit of spray on our pan so that they don't stick a little bit I say who eats the most fast food out of all the generations <laughs> my boyfriend well what he would be a millennial I would assume but I shouldn't assume anything I also eat the most fast food is that you that's saying Mopo Reno says Gen X well maybe your Gen X does but it's not because think about Gen Z and what age they are uh, older Millennials think about how old the Gen Z is they are uh, wouldn't they be teenagers they're born uh, 19 yeah to 90, 1995 to 2012 so the who eats the most uh, fast food would be Gen Z yeah so I'm going to take out some tortillas tortilla and I'm going to be using a little bit elder millennial Ooh, ah, ah. I'm going to be using a little bit of this sauce what you want to do what what you want to do is you want to put a little bit of the enchilada sauce on the bottom so you're just putting this on the bottom of the pan to coat the pan yeah yeah look at that overhead look at that that's nice so you just do this and then we're going to assemble the uh, enchilada so we are going to where's my chick here it is a little bit of this oh you know what I didn't make I can't I can't do this I didn't make make the pico de gallo oh. I need that first let's put those back in and make the pico de gallo I've got a food processor to help me out with that all right the next one that was who eats the most who consumes the most so we're not talking about food we're now talking about stuff this one surprised me <clears throat> well I thought boomers too but that's not the answer so who do you think consumes the most We're going to uh, just put in some tomatoes. Three tomatoes. I can't get the core off of this tomato. Just dropping these in to the food processor. Can't make it without pico de gallo. I mean, again, can you buy this? Yeah, easily bought. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Uh, who said it Nicole Gerard is right Nicole the Gen Z is the uh, highest consumer surprises me again because would you think they have the most disposable income no but by consuming I'm meaning uh, not food but consumer products and like is that the, the, the generation that is buying vehicles so it's not that it's just general stuff remember this is all done with the idea of sales and the idea of who they uh, are you know, sending out their sales approaches to okay so pico de gallo is three ripe tomatoes uh, one serrano chile but I'm not using serrano like we already discussed I'm just going to use a jalapeno I'm going to leave all the seeds in we want a little bit of heat and I'm going to use the zest of two limes we will be assembling these enchiladas when we get a minute <laughs> I almost forgot about this this gen can't get by without good phones ah yeah that's true that's true maybe consuming means devices and communication things very true 
All right, next one is the most consumer. Um, who has the most money? Who's got the money? Where's all the money in the in the uh, system? Who has the money? Smells delicious. And then we're going to zest both of these, or not zest, we're going to juice boomers. Yes, that's apparently the truth, is that the boomers have all the money. Nicole's winning. Nicole's winning. Tom is keeping track, Nicole, and you are winning. I thought Miss Erin was, little Miss Erin was going to be there. <clears throat> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I've got a cut on my finger, and this lime juice just did me in. So we're going to do both of these limes. <coughs> mm -mm, I love the smell of lime. Like, lemon's nice. All right, let's blend this. And I think that, wait, wait, wait. I didn't put salt in it. I need a teaspoon of kosher salt. One teaspoon of salt. You could put some pepper in it if you want. All right, last, uh, I think it's my, my last question. <clears throat> Who job hops the most? <clears throat> You're right, Erin. You are right. They job hop, and you are a millennial, so explain that. Hmm. No, it's not. I gotta go over here too. Yeah, it's millennials. <clears throat> All right, this looks good, and I can smell the lime in it. I may have forgotten the cilantro. But if you put the cilantro in too early, what are you gonna have? You're gonna have just all broken down into nothing. So let's just dice it. You know, there's this thing I was reading so much about this. Yeah, no fear. That's a good, good point. I was reading so much about this this week that I noticed that uh, they're talking about the clash. Now, why all of this research is being done so much is because uh, people, need to work with all these generations and so this is being done this research is being done so that ceos of companies and trainers of companies can uh, work with all of these and intermix all of these different generations together because boomers are still in the workforce uh, millennials are joining and you know and then you've got gen x and you've got gen z, be z being uh, competitive. You've got all of these generations in the workplace. So CEOs, uh, bosses of big companies, they need to work with all of these different generations. So they did. They they do all of this training. I think the younger uh, gens, especially after COVID, have been more outspoken about job benefits. And we'll just leave. Yeah, I think you're, you're right. And also that, that life work balance is something that, I mean, I've learned from millennials is that it's okay to just stop, slow down and enjoy a little bit more of life where we just never felt like we had that kind of an option. Okay. If you can use the overhead and you can see this Pico de Gallo, I just diced in the cilantro and it's lovely. There's a lot of juice in here, and what we certainly don't want is really juicy, runny enchilada. So let's tidy this up. Now, while I'm tidying it up before we assemble, we have a video of a woman who is obviously very, uh, uh, very trained, very knowledgeable about peppers. And I listened to her and here's one of those things where you can hear her accent and she just nails the proper pronunciation of these. She knows a lot about them. So let's watch that video while I get ready to assemble. 
and I'm gonna be showing you some of Mexico's most popular dried chiles used in Mexican cuisine. Now, some of these chiles are hot and some of them are mild. I have received a lot of comments and some of you wanna try these chiles out, but you don't know how to use them and in what dish. And some of you are afraid of using them because you think that they're all hot and they're not. So that's what I'm gonna be talking to you about today. And I'm gonna show you step by step. Let's get started. Now, the first chile that I'm gonna show you today is the chile poblano. Now, most of you are familiar with the chile poblano because these are the ones that we use when we make chile rellenos. Now, the skin is a little tough and they're a little hard and they're not usually eaten fresh like this. We usually roast them first. So if you were to leave this chile poblano hanging on the vine until it got nice and ripe, it would turn red. Now, once they are red, you wanna pick them and let them dry. And when they're totally dry, they become chile ancho, see? Now, ancho means wide. Mexico is very good about changing the name from a pepper that is fresh to the same pepper once it's dried. See, that's why the name changes from poblano to ancho. Now, this chile ancho is Mexico's most popular dried chile because you can use it in so many dishes. It's just perfect when you make mole, caldo talpeño, pozole. These are just absolutely delicious. And it smells kind of like uh, tobacco. It's a little flexible, but shriveled up and dried. This chile right here is very mild and it can be used along with other chiles in so many dishes. That's why it's Mexico's most popular dried chile. And it's very family friendly because it's very mild. Now, if this poblano pepper were to be left on the vine until it gets ripe and red, but left longer than that, it would turn like a brownish red. Now, that chile that is brownish red is dried, then it becomes a mulato. Now, here is the mulato. It looks exactly like the chile ancho. They smell the same, but they're different. They're both mild, but this one was left to ripen longer than this one was. If I were to open them both up, this would still have a tinge of red, and this one would be almost black from inside. Now, this can also be used in many dishes, and it's also popular, but you can use this one and you can use this one together in any dish that you want, but you don't want to replace one for the other because even though they're both dried chiles and they both came from the poblano pepper, they are different in flavors. It's kind of short, but I just wanted you to get a little flavor of her <clears throat> because I, I loved listening to her. I loved hearing what she had to say. She's some kind of serious about the peppers, but you know, she knows what she's talking about. So we are assembling the enchiladas now. So what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm gonna move my drink so you can see. I'm taking uh, a tortilla and I am putting a, a generous portion of chicken because this could very well be a main entree. So you don't want this to be like a little taco where you're getting you know, three of them on your plate. This is most likely going to be something that you have as a main entree and you might just combine it with some rice or some uh, beans or something. All right, so you can see how much I've put on. The, it, be generous, the pico de gallo, because that's going to give you that uh, nice juicy fullness to it as well. And then uh, I think I'm going to get, I'm gonna try and get uh, one, two, three, four, I'm gonna try and get six here. And I, I, that's about as much cheese as I have. Now we haven't put our recipe up, Tom's going to put the recipe up so that you can see what I've made tonight. So the enchilada sauce looks a little bit involved, but it's not. I, you, you, I mean, you can buy it just as easy. But if you do choose to make it, you aren't going to be sorry because I, I, I got quite a bit. And I think it's going to be uh, quite delicious as well. So I'm going to make my last one. And this was a package of six. So I tried to make this menu or this meal be, a, you know, exactly so that you're not ending up with bits and pieces of stuff. 
That was about uh, two, two pounds. It was two large chicken breasts that I sauteed. And so that got me about six. Uh, I've got a lot of juice here, but I'm not gonna waste this. You'll see what I do with it. It's really fresh. It smells like the lime in it. Very, very nice and fresh. There's nothing canned smelling about this. All right, I'm going to roll this last one. And it fits perfectly in this 9 by 13 pan. Let's put that there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm taking the rest of my enchilada sauce. So if you can use the overhead. And I'm pouring that here like this. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It does look good. So what I've used today is exactly enough to make six. But six main course ones. And then I want to make sure that uh, the core, even the ends of the uh, tortillas are covered. And if you saw on my Instagram, uh, there, you know, that rich red flavor that soaked right into those tortillas, very nice. So when I uh, present a, a recipe to you, I have made it once throughout the week, maybe even twice, or it's an old favorite and I've made it many times. All right, let's, now we've got some grated Monterey Jack, and that's what we're going to put on here. I do have my oven at 375. You got to think about that. And this is about two cups. I'm going to see if it's too much, but like, is there such a thing? All right, let's just put the whole two cups on. It's a lot. It's a lot, but these are going to really slap. Good. Nice. You see? Spread out there like that. Delicious. Okay, I'm going to put now the rest of the pico de gallo. It's a little juicy. That's okay. I'm draining some of it off because, I mean, you know, the main thing I can smell on this is the lime juice. That's lovely. Okay, let's spread, whoops, spread that out like that. <clears throat> Wash my hands. Now, this goes in the oven. Did I miss anything? No, we're going to bake this for about 22 minutes. So let's put this in our preheated oven. Put it on for 22 minutes and let's see if that's enough. I think it will be because the oven is at 375, which is kind of hot. I'm going to wipe my board off. And let's see where we're at. So I've gone through all of the, uh, uh, you're doing these, but I'm not part of it. So I'm not sure if anybody is answering these. I can't read it. Okay, Nirvana was the flagship band of this generation. Is it visible? Can they see it? Nirvana was the flagship band of this generation. Uh, you know what? I don't have the answers for these questions. I'm thinking, um, are we thinking Troy? No. Am I, oh, am I younger? Yeah. Mm, okay. There might be a, a little delay because, well, you know, people are... Sad. Sad? Oh, I don't know, Nirvana? Think again. Think again, Nicole. Mm. This is delicious, especially on my rough voice. It doesn't hurt or anything. <clears throat> We're going to go on now. No, you're wrong, Nicole. You're wrong. It's not Gen Z. It is millennial. Millennia. Okay, next question. <laughs> Nicole's just going to go through all of them. I can't read them. I don't know if everybody else can. This is the generation to which the electronic mail email was introduced. So the first generation that got an email. Yes. No, was it? Was it? Yeah. No, I thought. 
Yes, it was the millennial that the first people, the first generation to get to get an email was millennial. And and I maybe have told the story before, but I can remember Liz coming to us and saying, "Listen, there's this this really cool thing, and it's called the um, internet, and I think we should get it." And we were so sus about it. We're like, "Oh, I don't know, I don't know about this. Like, what's it going to cost us? What?" I don't know, do we really need this? What's this gonna bring into our lives? And Liz was insistent that we needed this. And so we said, okay, we'll get it. <laughs> and you know, nobody looked back from the dial up. All right, this is a panna cotta. Yes, mobile reno, millennial elders. Oh, there's that, that, that little edge. I like this millennial elders because yeah, that's true. There's a big gap. I happen to be a boomer junior because I am right on the edge of not being a boomer. And I, I sometimes I don't even feel like uh, I fit there. I've got four teaspoons of a booger. I've got four teaspoons of um, I, I'm distracted. I love this time for the stream. You know, I feel like really chill. It's dark out. It feels good. We're making dinner and that also feels good because we're also making food that we're going to eat and we need. And sometimes on a Sunday, I feel like we're making food in the middle of the day. Uh, my dad changed uh, careers in his 50s and he brought the internet home. We were early adopters. Well, we probably would still not be with the internet. I mean, maybe not. But late to it. We were late, but Liz just kept coming to us and saying, come on, like this is, this is important. Okay, I've got four teaspoons of gelatin and I am making a panna cotta. So we're leaving the Mexican flavor and we're going to, you need Bobo to co-host sometime. Oh, wouldn't that be exciting? I, my little, my little alpha <laughs> GC group chat. It's funny that came up today. Oh, oh, is that? Oh yeah, I see. Okay. I didn't know I didn't know you had it up. Okay. Four teaspoons of gelatin and uh, a half a cup of milk. And what I'm doing is I am letting that gelatin bloom in the milk. We're going to make a panna cotta. Is there anybody that knows what a panna cotta is? All right, so my gelatin's blooming. I can, I can feel the milk taking it on and it's getting a little thick. So let's go to the next step, which is to heat this milk. To heat this milk. So I, I put, it's, if you want to put the recipe up, it's one and a half cups of milk. I used half cup to dissolve my gelatin. And I'm going to put one cup into my pan because it won't work unless you've got some heat. So I've got a one cup of milk. So total is one and one half cup. It's just a nice light dessert that goes with something heavy like an enchilada. And now I'm going to put in, and if Chris is still here, I'm using metric because uh, Chris doesn't even know what 98.7 is. He thinks it's a radio station. So Chris made it quite clear in the stream last night that He's not quite sure why people are still using Imperial. Well, Americans are. So this is 398 milliliters <laughs> down with Imperial. I am uh, completely with you, Chris, uh, but which is like about 13.9 ounces, 14 ounces. So if you're reading a recipe that is geared towards Imperial system or an American system, it, it's still gonna have this. What I find I do is I go into my recipes and I adjust them. Like I, I've said to you before is I attend an American university. So I have to do all of my recipes two ways. Now you know when you open up a can of coconut milk, you've got all of the liquid at the bottom. So break free of the nice fat that's risen to the top. And what I've got now is uh, one cup of milk and 398 milliliters of coconut milk. Not cream, you just want milk. Now some people might say, oh, go for the cream. You don't really need it, 
Now, I want you to take note of what my half a cup of milk and my gelatin has done. Look, it's sort of like uh, a pudding. It's really adapted well. Perfect. I just need everyone to pick one. Okay, but let's, for a minute while Chris is here, let's talk about if you, fluc if you fluctuate between the two yourself. Uh, is vegan, right? This gelatin, as a matter of fact, is, well, it's not pork. I won't use that one. So, yeah, it is a vegetable gelatin, and I'll, you can get it. I got it at a place called One Fine Food, and I know I've been made fun of that name before because there's only one, One Fine Food, and you can get it. it it's a little, it's not going to make it really heavy duty, but I'm not using pig gelatin. That kind of disgusts me. All right, so I've got uh, one cup of milk. 14 ounces or 398 milliliters. Okay, good. You're just going home and I'll be back in the shop at... Chris, uh... We will shop until you are there. Okay, so I'm blending all of this and a third cup of sugar because we do have to sweeten this. You can make this, uh, so this panna cotta, if there's any uh, Italians in the, in the crowd, which Andrea, are you still here? It's a delicious pudding-like, gelatin-like dessert. So I want to bring that to uh, <clears throat> a slight boil. Oh, I see, once I, okay, oops, I mean, I'll be back in the chat. Okay, come on, get home fast. And come on back in the chat because it's just not the same without you here. Okay, good. Once you're home. All right, let, uh, this is heating. Let's let that heat. Uh, you, you let that boil. <clears throat> you let it actually boil. And then once it boils, I add this gelatin mixture. Do you see what I've done? I'm heating some coconut milk, some milk, and some sugar. Very simple. And in this, I put milk and gelatin. I'm going to mix the two, and I'm going to have like a milky-like pudding dessert. It's going to be delicious. Do we have another question for generations? What I'm going to do on top of this... Oh, yeah, eat that one. Okay. Oh, ah, we might be out of them. We might be out group chat did that we may be I told Tom you know he's got six to eight I'm like it's not enough all right if you are in the chat and you think you know something about uh, a generation and let's not talk about the negative things because you know there are some things that I know about boomers that you know like you may be frustrated that you need to keep helping boomers with computers. However, that's not all of us. So some boomers um, may have had some experience and maybe their job relied on computer access, but also we're on this huge learning curve. So we didn't have this in our hands. We had to learn it. So actually, you know, maybe we're smarter about computers because <laughs> we learned it. I'm going to put some strawberries again, my own strawberries, a raspberries, yeah, I always say that, into this little ninja. I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to this because, you know, they're not sweet enough on their own. Let me go get some sugar. So <clears throat> I'm going to say not quite a third cup. Not quite, and I'm gonna put some lemon juice in there just to give it a nice, I better stir this. Mmm, that smells amazing. So if you could tell me something you know about, uh, great to be back, have a great night. Thanks, Nicole, for stopping in. Thanks so much. Uh, before you go, 
Tell us something about a generation that you know, and you've got two Gen Zs in your house. Tell us about that. Tell us something you know about a Gen Z before you go. I hate this knife. I hate this knife. We may not have caught her. Uh, Nicole is a Gen X that's got two Gen Zs in her household. And I was hoping that she would be able to tell us something that is unique. If you are still here and you know something about a generation that you just can't get past, you know, it's like this is all they do. Let us know about that. I need a lid. Here it is. I'm going to puree these uh, raspberries. They've got a little bit of sugar and a little bit of lemon juice. Oh, that's secure. I don't think it is. Mm. Nope, that's not going in nice. Yeah, it's cross-threaded and I don't know. Oh, there we go. Maybe you just have to do that. Oh, no, I gotta mix it. I gotta rinse it though. I don't want enchilada sauce in my raspberry stuff. Ew. That is not a good combination. So everybody here uh, is very aware of the Speakeasy channel. We are really trying to keep this ability to stream for all of you alive. So if you, I, I, I thank you for being here. If you could uh, remember to log on to the Speakeasy, they're probably the, uh, the best thing since sliced bread. I, I don't know if this is working for me, but I think it is now. Love this new thing. Okay, they were a little bit frozen, so um, I just took them out of the freezer, so we might have a, ooh, that's nice. All right, watching my stuff over here, look at that. What is that? What was this, coconut stuff? That was a fun conversation about generations tonight. Uh, I've, I've got a lot of thought process in this this week, and it was mostly because of uh, Bo saying that he was an alpha and knowing so much about it, and that brought me to start researching it. And when I read, you know, alphas know more things beyond their years, I thought how true that was. How true, how true when he was explaining this to me, and I was fascinated. You know, you go from a point when you're with a kid to the point where you're telling them everything, to them instructing you and bringing world to you. And Bo brought the world of Gen Alpha to me. And I was fascinated when I started reading about them, even though I knew them. And they are all like nine years old. That's exactly it. So it's a nine year old to the future of 2025. And I find them the most fascinating because uh, we, we have to depend on them. They are going to be the generation that uh, takes care of me when I can't take care of myself. We're gonna kind of wait a bit for this to boil. It's happening, but it needs to come to a full boil because you need to scald the milk. Hey, Bruiser's here and we're making <laughs> all that milk we're making a panna cotta so a raspberry one you missed it we made enchiladas and we made it quite the entrance we made the enchilada sauce with our chiles so we had a dried encho chiles and we had dried guajillo chiles i can't say any of this stuff and i'm not even going to try and we had some serrano chiles and we made an enchilada sauce and it was great. I think we could serve this in our, in our bistro. 
Who's Cristo? Oh, you can't say it, and I can't eat it. Ah, that's true. But you could eat my panna cotta. <laughs> never, never mind. Of um, course, he looks like the suspect. You could eat that the don't make him guilty. You look like an idiot. That doesn't mean you're Okay, whoa, well, milk is scalding. Well, of course, he looks. No, it's scalded. S stupid milk. And now I'm going to add in my uh, soaked gelatin. Uh, Bruiser, this is a vegetable based gelatin product that I get from a place called One Fine Food. And it is the only thing that I'll use because I'm not really big on pig gelatin. So uh, I am going to, you could make panna cotta in individual dishes, uh, or you can make it in one large dish, and I'm going to do it like this. I'm making it into one uh, square, one, uh, what is this, eight by eight pan. So I need to put that gelatin in, and now I need to bring it back to a boil. By the time I do this, and I have made some raspberry puree with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of lemon juice, I can't put it on there, because as you know, this has to go in the fridge and set, and then I can do the raspberry puree. So I'm probably going to be sealing this. What is it then, agar? Yes. It is, and it's so nice when my uh, bistro partner is here because then we talk food. It is, and it thickens it like gelatin. Oh, I think my enchiladas are done. I'm going to go get them out while my panna cotta finishes. I'm going to cook them anymore because the last thing I want is any of it to dry out. Can you check that out, please? I shut my oven off. Can you check this out? I'm going to bring it back into the screen or into the camera a little bit more. Said the boomer. All right. Uh, got my cork thing. There we go. Bubbly, yes. So now I am going to... Okay, my uh, milk is scalding here. I got to do two things at once. Bring it to a boil. I'm going to shut it off and let it sit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the greens of my green onions, my scallions. If you've been to the grocery store right now, you will discover that scallions are $2 for one bunch. $1.98 for one bunch. Uh, that's, that's robbery. When we find out that Loblaw has just published a $598 million profit. Don't even start on that. Okay, I am just pouring this on top or putting this on top. Just, I don't want to waste any of they're insane. I don't want to waste any of the scallion. So I'm using the greens, although I used the whites inside the enchilada sauce. This recipe, if you want to put it up for Bruiser, this recipe makes six large enchiladas. And Bruiser, you can't eat them. I know that, but you can see my enchilada sauce and just uh, see if you think I should have added anything. Apple juice. <laughs> No, I'm not adding apple juice. Bruiser goes crazy. Cardamom, no. Cardamom makes my heart race. All right, this is yummy. I'm going to set this aside someplace. Oh, uh, well, I think we've done that joke once. Yeah, cardamom makes my heart race, and so does raw garlic. I don't know what that is. All right. Uh, just kidding, good. So we all know that uh, Bruiser is in the chat and they are a qualified chef. whoop de frickin' do <laughs> We always welcome them here because they keep us real. All right, I am putting this panna cotta into my 8x8 and you can see it's the perfect amount. 
perfect amount to have. I could have put this into separate dishes and I would have gotten maybe eight servings, you know, eight small servings. I do it like this so that it, it's just, if I was serving it for guests, I would do it differently. Okay, what is in mine? Uh, yes, it is. No, it's not an extract. It's a milk. So there's a one and a half cups of whole cow milk, and there is uh, 398 or 14 ounces, 398 milliliters or 14 ounces of coconut milk, third cup of sugar. It's so simple, and four teaspoons of gelatin, and that's what I how I get the whole entire thing. I chill this. There's no salt in it, nothing like that. I chill this, and then tomorrow I will add on the raspberry puree. Raspberry puree. You knew I was going to do that. So that can go into um, the outside fridge. <clears throat> Bruiser, today we were talking about generations, and I believe that you would be a millennial. So we are talk we were talking the whole stream about what makes each generation the traits that uh, can go to each generation and what makes them unique. So tell me something that makes the millennial what what I don't know what I am. I I do. You are a millennial. So millennials were born between let me just get the exact start. We're born between 1980 and 1994. Now, uh, maybe I had it wrong. Maybe you are actually a Gen Z. No, Gen Z, you know, you're, you're, no, 1995 to 2012. Okay, so what makes a millennial unique? Tell me something you know about millennials. We talked about today them, they are the uh, brokest, they are the happiest, uh, they are the one who job hops, which really confuses boomers. <laughs> we were the last generation to play outside, oh that's really good because that's, that's the truth. Oh actually, um, yeah that's the truth because once the screens came, we learned computers first. You did. You did. And uh, you're the ones who know, you're the only generation who knows no internet and internet. We had pogs, not iPads. Oh, you know what? Bruce was good at this. You're right. I remember those pogs. When I was teaching, we had to ban them from the school because people were uh, gambling with them. <clears throat> they were stealing them. Yay! I back, I back. Wow, that was a quick trip. I have a raspberry. I think Liz has pogs in the attic. No, I don't think Liz had pogs. Liz, I don't think you had pogs. I think you were, um, you weren't into pogs. But you are the only generation that knows no internet and internet at all at the same time. The day kids would play with round circles nowadays, they'd need a Pog app on TikTok. Well, that, <clears throat> the, the year that Elf Gen Alpha was born, 2013, is the first time that apps became the number one word of the year. Uh, Dial-up internet. Oh, man. You had Pogs? I don't remember you having Pogs. I had a grade eight group that were so seriously into pogs that uh, we had issues around it. And there, it, yeah, so many pogs. Pogs were a big deal. They were currency. Slammers, oh. hunk of joke, slammer, gonna bust it tonight. <laughs> I had a student that said that, and that became the funniest thing my family had ever heard. And I, we, every time something goes wrong, we always say, hunk of junk, slammer, gonna bust it tonight. Slammers. Oh my God, you're bringing me back into the millennial world. That is amazing. We have lots. Hmm. Where did you buy the, where, where did we buy pogs? No, 
not um, on the internet. Not on the internet, no. We didn't shop on Amazon for pogs. Imagine that. You know, we didn't see that coming, did we? We didn't see that, you know, online shopping would be the preferred method. Oh, music videos, you're right. Especially, uh, you know, living in Toronto or visiting Toronto, MTV, music video, nothing on demand. Nothing on demand is very true. But I remember the first thing that our internet you just go along. <laughs> I forgot about that. I remember the first thing our internet was big in our house, and we had like, you know, in the paneled basement with our uh, computer on a little corner table. The first thing was ICQ, and I think that was the first communication system, and, and we were fascinated. Okay, MySpace that with the little people, the, the blue icon with the little people. I don't remember being so involved in MySpace. <clears throat> 20 minute workout, yeah. I don't remember MySpace. I do remember ICQ being a big deal. No, I was, uh, oh, that's right. BBS was first. That's right. Before the uh, internet was. Yeah, this is text on the Yeah. MSN Messenger, that's right. But. When BBS, like, how did you find people? I don't remember that. Came, oh, ICQ came at Clark. So that was a couple years later. But how did we find people? So you're on this BBS and... Chat you, rooms. Was it chat rooms? Yeah, oh, group chat. You had to find a phone number. You dial, oh my God. Oh, I remember this. So that when you dialed that phone number, you disconnected the whole family. <laughs> Chat and play games. Facebook was for university college students. You know, there's so many things I don't know. Um, maybe you were more in tune to it, but there's so many things that I don't remember not having. I just remembered all of a sudden being there. I think uh, call waiting. Was it pirate pirate music, or music, yeah. LimeWire, that's right. No, before that. Before that one? <clears throat> I, sorry, my lips are chapped because of this cold. Burning CD. Okay, as boomers, uh, there's so many things, and I know we, we joke about Napster. We joke about... Um, about boobers, but I, I can't get away from the fact that we have learned so much and that we have that ability to keep learning. And I, and I did read that today, that that's something about boomers is that we will continue to learn and we always take interest in what's current. <clears throat> I, got, I got to sit down, guys. So this is an interesting... Uh, <laughs> this is in Jurassic Park when they're... <laughs> CD-ROM. CD but do you remember, uh, I, I mentioned uh, the Jetsons the other day to my grandson, who's nine. I mentioned the Jetsons, and, you know, I, I mentioned it to my daughter as well, and they're like, oh, yeah, the Jetsons. And then out from the back seat comes the nine-year-old grandson who goes, what's the Jetsons? If, as a millennial, I think you remember the Jetsons because you probably watched reruns. But the Jetsons showed us FaceTime way before we knew what FaceTime was. And doctor's appointments were done. Uh, they, you know, George Jetson called Judy Jetson from his office on FaceTime. And we didn't even bat an eye. That was just some kind of futuristic thing and then boom we we take it for granted now i am going to scoop out one of those enchiladas and i'm going to show you what it looks like being cut up so when you have something that is cheesy and bubbly 
and you have just taken it out of the oven, it's very good to just let it chill for a bit because now I'm thinking that this could be served with a little bit of sour cream. All right, so like I said, look at this as a as a main entree, not as like a taco. I'm gonna get a little sour cream for that. Yeah, I think that looks like it's gonna really slap and I'm gonna try it. That's what I'm... <laughs> so my professor has told me that one thing about my streams, uh, that plate looks so delicious right now, I think it would murder me. Why? Is it the hotness or is... All right, so my professor has told me that... Camera's guy, yeah. Um, I don't taste my food. So, you know, let's taste this food. Mm. You know what? Okay, it's really hot. It's delicious. It's really hot. Um, we're kind of taking some heat away. Yeah, yeah, the peppers, but not not a real solid kick at the end. It's like a hot, but it's a mellow hot. And it's soft. That's the nice thing about it. Boy, I hate it when you when you get something like this and, and the tortilla has gone a little bit crusty. It's not good. Mmm. Yes. Try that. Oh, yeah. The wow. That's delicious. Okay, yeah, there's a kick. I can feel the kick, but how delicious with a with a margarita. Anyway, uh, I really thank everybody who showed up today. We have uh, we we have some people on that maybe didn't give us their guess. Yeah, living her best life. I am, and that's something boomers are doing is they're living their best life. You know, we worked hard. And they're the ones who are the most reluctant to go into retirement. Why do you think that is? Uh, I don't know. I think that the boomers uh, like a certain quality of life. And we're not, well, it's like mowing going on over here. And I don't think that we are willing to let go of that quality of life. But that's the one thing I did read about boomers is that we are the most reluctant to go into retirement. So... I mean, one retirement into the next job. Uh, we still have a few of you here who have not made your predictions for the arrival of the grandchild. Uh, I would like to not tell you what the due date is, just knowing that the uh, doctor has said, any day now. So uh, we have Liz saying February 27th. We have me saying uh, March 1st. What's your prediction Mine? Nine. Mm -mm. Mm. there's a lime flavor that really uh, jumps out so the pico de gallo by like by scratch is a great idea because the lime in there it's so fresh uh, February 29th, well, okay, if it is, it's not this year, so she's going to be pregnant for a long time. Uh, Tom says March 9th. Uh, Celebrity Juice Diet, Chris has said May 15th. That's a, um, a little bit and is going to weigh 25 pounds. Aaron? Aaron, did we get your choice? So uh, Monique is expecting any day and we keep like waiting for the phone to ring and there's no phone that's ringing. March 2nd. Gonna say solid March 2nd. All right, I like that, because that is Thursday after the big storm, which all the snow is supposed to fall. Uh, Mobo Reno, did you even weigh in on this? I get, you're the, first. what'd she say? She said first. March 1st? 
I don't think we got Troy's decision. This is not a first baby. No, this is not a first baby. Bowden is our firstborn, and now we're waiting for the second one. Uh-huh. Mm -mm. mm -mm. That must be the best enchilada I've ever made. February 28th, she says. Okay, February 28th. Last day of February. We got a lot. And anyway, there is going to be a prize for this. We don't know the prize, but there will be something. Uh, Bruiser said, uh, March 2nd. Well, I'm going to tell you that the due date is March 11th. So if anybody would like to change their date. <laughs> I love a baby pool. Um, if you'd like to change your date, let us know, but the doctor keeps, and I think the doctor, like Monique has said, the doctor's playing her because she keeps saying, oh, I don't think you're going to make the week. And then the week went by and then she says, I don't think you're going to make the weekend. And then the weekend's almost gone by. There is tomorrow. Troy's in for tomorrow. Troy, where Troy, I don't see that. Troy says Tomorrow. Wow, like it's going to be an annual or a weekly thing that we show up at the hospital. Okay, Troy says tomorrow, but what did Monique say? March 1st. Mm. Doctors are always off. Well, this doctor says that it's happening, so we will wait and see. What else can you do? Yeah, what else can you do? We can't do anything else. We are going to uh, remind you about, Boston. you just heard uh, my alarm go off on my phone, so Boston Bruins just scored. Yes, I do have a, a goal horn on my phone. Uh, we are going to remind you about uh, March 9th, we're going to, if there's no baby, we're going to be going to Shaylin Farms uh, Farm, and that's the Shea family that owns it, and then March 19th, we're bringing that to you. March 15th, we have a big reveal of a project that we've been involved in and we can't tell you about it, but we will on March 15th. We have a baby coming any day and we're always uh, waiting for that. And what else do we have coming up? We have got a maple, what's that called? Honey Bear Maple Syrup Farm that we've been invited to go see. And you know, it just, it's there, but we have to wait till the sap runs. The surprise is our bistro. Yes, already. Uh, Bruiser and I are waiting to win a million dollars and we're going to uh, open a bistro together. So when we win all this money and we don't have to worry about profits, we can just gloriously uh, cook food and not worry about if anybody wants this food. But if we're together on this, this food is going to really sell. Yes. No, it's not going to be in Chatham. Why would it be in Chatham? We're going to stick with the core of the lakes. I think, I don't know. We have to see. Anyway, that's all of our excitement that's coming up. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, I thought we were going to call it uh, um, Rocky and Bullwinkle or Rude and Bullwinkle. I don't know. We, have, we, we need a name. That could be our other contest. If you could name our bistro. We're thinking uh, we're going to sell soups and uh, pastries made by Bruiser themselves. I think that that's the safest thing. I don't know. We don't have a name yet. Rude and Bullwinkle, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Twiddle G, Twiddle Dumb? No, because I'm not going to be Twiddle Dumb. It, it will be. It, it was going to happen. I don't know when. Uh, you know, could, you know, when a boomer and a millennial get together... The millennial makes all the decisions, and I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I'm going to go just one couple more. Bruiser, who's the coolest generation? So these are questions we asked. Who is the coolest generation? And, you know, don't say millennials because you're wrong. Uh, no. 
You know what, Aaron? I think you're, I am the coolest. I think Aaron is, in my opinion, Aaron is right because this survey was uh, not taken in consideration with the alphas and I am all sold on the alphas because I think that they are the most exciting, the most interesting, the smartest. I am the coolest. Well, <laughs> I don't know. The fuck is an alpha? An alpha is somebody that is born from 2013 to 2025. So they are nine years old and counting. And yeah, another goal. So much potential there. That's, that's excitement. So much, but they're also the ones who have the uh, least social skills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they do. Now, tell me about the different generations and how they communicate. So you have to contact a customer. As, as you as your generation, how are you going to contact them? How are you contacting this customer in your generation? <laughs> Text. Text, yeah. And, okay, I might be a little bit millennial because when I get, I'm talking to somebody and, you know, you're getting into a really big chat and all of a sudden they call you. A customer, I'm, I'm saying that you are in a, a retail or a, an office situation and not phone call, yes! And, and like all of a sudden you're texting somebody and they phone you. Now I do that with my daughters because sometimes I need to, to, them to hear my expression. But when they call, what do you do? I freeze. I'm like, ah, oh, they know I'm here, so I have to answer it. But I don't. Never a FaceTime. Yeah, I know. It's so awkward. It's awkward. Why, 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 why do you want to do that? Just text the hell out of that conversation. Uh, <laughs> I get offended when my phone rings if it's not my mother, but also sometimes if it is my mother. Yeah, I get a, oh yeah. I know. My phone is always on silent. I know. And okay. Remember, I'm a boomer, so my mother is a silent generation. And she still says to me, I called you, but you weren't home. What's wrong with that? I sometimes check to see if I'm on silent because I'm not getting any calls. <laughs> That's just because you're a loser. That's not because you're a boomer. Uh, yeah, my phone's always on silent. And besides, I see that phone call. I see that phone call. I don't want it. And I get annoyed when there is somebody I need to call that I can't text. And I don't want to remember that information they're giving me. I always say, can you send that in, a, in an email? I, I don't want that. I don't want that. All right, we are, who needs to remember phone numbers anymore? I don't know. I could tell you. I know yours because it's close to mine, but I couldn't tell you a phone number. Like, I couldn't tell you Liz's phone number. I don't even know the exchange of it. I don't even know what's that thing called, this, the area code exchange. No. Anyway, I don't even know that. It might be 416. I don't know. It might be 647. It might be 219. I don't know. Because I just press boom. For boomer. <laughs> boomer for boomer. <laughs> yeah. We are going to go and have an enchilada. This was a great stream. Thank you for showing up. <clears throat> Thank you to all 13 of you. Lucky number. If you watched Speakeasy Radio last night, if you watched Speakeasy Radio last night, this was super fun. You saw that they tier ranked numbers. And I fell asleep because I'm a boober. I fell asleep. Oh, I stayed till the end of the stream. But I never realized how much significance in a number. 
I didn't realize, was it eight, 185 or 187 that means the code for murder? I mean murder, how droll. What was that, Liz? Was it 185 or 187? What was the top? Uh, it was 187. And so this is what, <clears throat> uh, is this like a, uh, the, what a police person would say over the radio is we've, we've got a 187 police code. Yes. Okay. And I just thought like, it's so mundane. Oh my God. Don't bore us with the 187. Just say we've got a murder. Defund the 187. Anyway, this was the funniest stream because when Liz said we're doing, oh yeah, seven was the top number. But nobody acknowledged what I said in the chat because Chris said, why seven? What's so big about seven? Because if you get triple sevens at a casino, you win. And what's so big about sevens? But remember, you know, biblically, Eight is the best, but if you know biblically, uh, you know, God made the world in, seven, in six days and on the seventh day he rested. So seven is, you know, a chill day and that was a significant thing. The seventh day there was light and we rested and ate enchiladas. What did you make women? Uh, the first. Women were made first and then uh, the apes got up and walked on the sixth day and then the imaginary friend uh, rested on the seventh day. <laughs> Who was counting days when God was making shit? <laughs> How is that even possible? I guess he started off, he or she <clears throat> started off with saying, look, I'm going to do some shit right now and I'm going to create some stuff like monkeys are going to walk and women are going to rule. And I'm going to do all this in, <clears throat> let's say, six days, because that's about all I've got in me. And then I'm going to job hop on the seventh day. And I'm going to be a Gen, <clears throat> listen, uh, I'm going to be a Gen Z on the seventh day. And I'm going to work only when I want to. So even God just like fluctuated through all of those generations. Like worked hard like a boomer for six days, job hopped. Uh, like a millennial on the seventh day and chose not to work like a Gen Z on the seventh day. Anyway, that was the significance of seven. So, uh, <clears throat> God, the OG generation of one. <laughs> why, why aren't we counting that? Why are we only counting at the greatest, 1901? What was before that? Like, th those people... Those people deserve a generation. Oh, I got a broken deal. Anyway, <laughs> we are going to uh, go have some enchiladas, but Speakeasy Radio on Friday is always good, even if it's something like numbers as a tier ranker. It still <clears throat> is amazing what uh, creative minds can do. And yes, they are creative. Everybody's creative. They're more creative than others. We are going to go eat our enchiladas and we are going to thank you for showing up, all 14 of you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are not going to be on tomorrow. We're going to take a little bit of a break tomorrow. We're thinking that once we go back to the farmer's market, we are going to be selecting things at the farmer's market, bringing it home and cooking with it on our Saturday stream. And this is our new idea of doing a Saturday stream is that we can bring food home from the market and cook it. Right. Yeah, I really like it too. So thanks a lot for coming. It's only eight o'clock. The night is still young. You've got lots of time to do whatever you want to do. But I thank you so much for coming. I will see you next Saturday. Bye.